This is how many tourists experience seeing a lion or another pig cat for the first time in South Africa, either at a predator park or a zoo. Seeing animals in captivity is easier than in the wild for many people, and the certain promise of up close and personal activities with big cats is a big draw for the public. But what about the welfare of those animals and what really happens to big cats once they're too big to be handled by people? To understand the captive big cat industry in South Africa, I'll be speaking with a true authority in the field, Hildegard Perker. She's dedicated two decades to the rescuing of big cats from exploitative captive conditions from around the world and to the long-term care of those animals as the sanctuary manager of Lions Rock Big Cat Sanctuary in South Africa. Hi Sarah, um, thank you for having me. Um, yes, I am um, the sanctuary manager here at Lions Rock Big Cat Sanctuary. I came here um, when uh, for pause started the sanctuary here and uh, came with the first group of lions. South Africa is estimated to have over 300 big cat breeding facilities. These facilities keep between 10 and 12,000 lions. That's approximately over three times South Africa's wild population. So Hildegard, can you tell me a little bit about what a typical breeding farm looks like? There is a big variety from mostly the, the, the most concerning thing is that they're obviously breeding and using the cups for cup bedding, bottle feeding, walk with them when they're older. They are um, imprinted by humans and um, many of them would end up being either breeding females again or, or being shot for, for trophy. The allure of getting up close and personal with lion cubs can be tempting for tourists. However, it's obvious that behind those photo opportunities lie many issues related to the physical and psychological health of the animals. I've asked Perka to inspect some footage that we've received of a typical lion farm to give me her opinions. Yeah, obviously there is a makeshift kind of den made for them, but the fact that they are pulling them out for cup petting anytime, whenever they have people who want to do that, is the one thing which obviously you can see already that they are sleepy and they are disorientated. So the scruffy fur for me shows also like the mother would groom them, the mother would know what to do, yes. And then they are manhandled, like here, <clears throat> picked up, as you would expect. Cubs can become very annoyed when they are manhandled. I mean, you should not have to be an, an animal expert to understand that this is not uh, natural, that the, deer, that the animal is stressed, that it uh, is, is, is obviously growling at whoever is, is there. And presumably at this age in the wild, they'd still be in the den with their mother? Yeah, definitely. At this time, you know, and we'll wait for their mom to come back whenever she is there. And in that time, they would be, where they are alone, they would be staying in their dens and be sleeping or quiet or, you know, not going far. Now, tourists are often told that these cubs have to be removed from their mother and she cannot look after them or perhaps she rejected them at birth. The information that um, they need to remove the cubs from their mothers because the mother wouldn't look after them or kill them or eat them is absolute rubbish. Sorry to say that. It's it's something they those people will come up with just to justify, so to say, why they are taking the cups and what they do is they explo exploiting actually the, the cups for, for money. It is a business model, a very cruel and exploitive business model. And it is not true that the mom would kill them. That is against everything natural. It is should be also clear to every mother, human mother, that this is not not the right way. And how can tourists try and distinguish bet between a facility that describes itself as a sanctuary but then allows interactions like this and a true sanctuary that doesn't allow for captive exploitation? Yeah, I think research is very important to, to look into it before you go somewhere and be aware of that, that there is this industry and that there is all of those um, places which call themselves maybe sanctuary, but the moment they have cubs which are not with the moms or cubs at all, it means that they are breeding. So a sanctuary would never breed. A sanctuary, a real true sanctuary, is there to take in animals which have no other 
chance to, to for a better life and which will live the rest of their lives in good, very good human care. They wouldn't breed, they wouldn't trade, they wouldn't um, hunt, obviously, and um, no interaction with, no no interaction whatsoever with, with humans and give them the most space and the best, you know, natural environment and natural living conditions.